Welcome back to another Bob Blast. Hi, I'm Bob Burridge, and this one is all about circles and why it's important to know about drawing circles. So let's start off with just doing charcoal circles. You remember back in grade school, <laughs> learning cursive, learning to do this? There you go. Just keep doing this with charcoal. These are willow sticks. It's a great way to get your arm and your hand relax to do these kinds of things. All right, so start off with cursors. Then, now let's go in and actually do circles. By the way, notice how I'm holding the charcoal. Not like a pencil, but more all five fingers. So the whole thing holds together like this. And notice that I'm using my whole hand, not just your fingers doing little circles like that. You wanna use your whole hand, the whole arm. Just keep doing this to get used to it. One right after another, hundreds of them. So now you're in the swing of doing circles. Uh, while you're at it, you may as well do the other two basic things. We have charcoal, uh, charcoal, charcoal triangles. Do char charcoal triangles, okay. And then the other shape, we always talk about squares. So we have circles, triangles, and squares. Why did you learn to do that? Because you can draw any kind of a fruit or a vegetable organic things, and basically you just start off with a circle. There's your circle, you've already practiced that, and a pear is nothing more than a circle with a triangle on the top. You've already done that. There's your pear, now you can kind of give it some personality here. There we go, there we go, there you go. We have a pear, the same thing. Oh, by the way, you have to put, an you have to put a shadow underneath it, just like that. It kind of helps to anchor it a little bit. One of the nice things about charcoal, you can kind of move it around with just your finger, all right? So that's an easy way of drawing a pear, which is a circle and a triangle on the top. How about a, a pineapple? Pineapple is two circles. Then you connect them like that. And then we have the one, wonderful tops. There we go. See how easy? So learn about the basic shapes. And today's lesson really was about drawing circles. So let's do it with paint this time. So now let's paint a pineapple two circles. Pretty simple. Okay, we'll start off with a charcoal sketch. There's the other circle, see? I'm just gonna connect them, flatten out the bottom a little bit, and those wonderful leaves on the top. I'm gonna have it sitting on a table so I just sketch it lightly. I don't give myself a whole lot of detail. Now let's go painting. Painting, yay. It's acrylic paint. And these are really loose. Only meant to be really loose. Fast sketches. Now remember, I'm gonna have the light coming across here. It's a little arrow. It's like, light's gonna be over here, all right? Let's see what we can do over here. And I'm gonna have the leaves. This is the phthalo green I'm using here. See, I use one brush. You can use the fat side or the skinny side. And I like to give my pineapple some personality. Anchor it down a little bit, okay? And this side, do my mixing over here off the table. On this side too. So we're, we're looking at contrast right now. Again, just super fast. I don't slow down, don't give the viewer all the pieces of information, right? And while I have that paint on my brush, I'm gonna put it up inside, of course, all the leaves are. Whew. This is called painting, for me anyway. <laughs> and uh, just with water, I'm gonna wipe away some of this. I'm not using really white right now. I'm using the white of the paper. Wiping it away a little bit. Okay. Wiping it away. I want this background here to be darker. Really make it wet on your brush. And a little bit of negative shape painting here. Here we go. A 
love painting loose like this. You never know where it's gonna go. You're really teaching yourself how to paint by doing lots of paintings. Now I wanna put down the shadow here. I tend to make my shadows slightly bluish. There we go. That way it anchors it down a little bit. Soften this with water, just with water. It's almost like a watercolor. I'm gonna splash it some more. There we go. Pick up some more red. Nice little surprises in here. I'm gonna make this even darker. I'm changing the color. It's one of the nice things about acrylics. I can keep changing the color until it works. It really pops now, doesn't it? Well, again, it's meant to be a sketch. I'm not gonna overpaint it, but I do wanna put the dark over here. There we go, give it more. There we go. Notice I haven't done all those little octagons inside here. So I kind of fake it like this. Just give it, imply it a little bit. And wipe it off. Voila, it's done it's as far as doing pineapples. But now, how about a, let's do a face. It'll all be based on circles. So let's draw a face, a simple face using nothing but circles. Here's the skull. Maybe down here at the chin, see another circle? Okay. And we can connect them like that. Let's come in with a neck, give you the neck. Shoulders. It's all based on circles like that. Maybe connect some ears. Again, I, I love sketching with charcoal. Okay, that's the beginning of that. So let's get right into painting. And of course, this was just charcoal. This would be a monochromatic sketch using circles, lots of water, lots of water. Use lots of water so it flows off. So again, if the light's coming across this direction, it's gonna be nice and dark on this side. Just like when we did the pear. So things are gonna be dark on that side. And lighter on this side. There we go. So nice and light over here. Again, I'm not using white paint, but I will wipe it out using Negative shape <laughs> wiping away. Something like that. There we go. So now we have the light side of the face and dark side of the face. And from there, we can start doing all kinds of details. But see, if you get the basic circles down and then connect them and think about lights and darks, you're off to a good start for your next great painting. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you at the next Bob Blast. Hi, I wanna thank all you artists that have already posted your paintings of Let's Dance in the virtual exhibit, seen all over the world, isn't that exciting? So there's still time for you to still post some of your images, you know, at the Roberts Bird Studio. And so remember, it's all about the excitement of dance. It could be one person, it could be two people dancing, it could be a community dancing be upside down all over the place. It's called dance. It's a celebration, isn't it? It's about time. So I think we artists uh, isolated in our studios or wherever you are, let's dance and post those images. I cannot wait to see them. It's so exciting to see them. Hey, I'll see you on the next Bob Blast.